So it looks like OpenAI is cooking up a brand new announcement on a project that's codenamed Jawbone. Jawbone looks like it's the beginning of the rollout of AI agents, actual AI assistants that are able to carry on long horizon tasks that operate autonomously. Each AI assistant is like another set of arms. Subscribe and expand your reach. So thanks for Tibor for posting this. Here's kind of what that looks like. As you can see here, here's sort of a task that can be executed at certain specified times here, for example, weekly on Saturday at 12 a.m. Take a look. So we're able to view all tasks, edit tasks. Looks like we have name, instructions, scheduling, and receiving notifications, desktop, mobile, email. We can check to have it repeat daily or weekly or annually at any given time, etc. So this is a beta feature. Uh, we still don't have access to it. This is still rumors. So, I mean, take this with a grain of salt. We don't yet know exactly what's happening. We OpenAI has not announced it yet. So just take everything with a grain of salt. But it looks like some people are already seeing some of this functionality. So thanks to testingcatalog.com. So this is ChatGPT to soon support task scheduling with new beta feature posted by Alexei Shabanov. So let's see. OpenAI is working on a new feature called Tasks. The code name is Jawbone, it seems like, which is expected to be released in the beta during the 12 days of OpenAI. The Tasks feature will allow users to schedule certain prompts for later execution by ChatGPT. According to the information in the code, the maximum scheduled time will be up to two years in advance. Additionally, these scheduled tasks can be potentially repeated. For example, you can set a task to send AI news from testing catalog every morning. Currently, you can use something like make.com or Zapier to set up some of these things, but most people won't. This is going to make it a whole lot more accessible to start developing stuff like that. And it is kind of like the first step towards agents. So here's testing catalog on Twitter. Actually, a great follow. I just realized I've been following them for a while. So like we said, Tasks Beta will allow users to schedule these tasks, and these automations will be handled by a new model tool, quote-unquote Jawbone, right? The code named Jawbone. There will also be a notification tab in settings, assumingly to control the way you will receive notifications about scheduled tasks. Interestingly, the same feature is being developed for Gemini. What is the chance of seeing both of them released on the same day? Google is going scorched earth, it seems like. They're going hard up against OpenAI. Back in the days, it seemed like OpenAI would sort of rain on Google's parade. People would chuckle as they would release something better than Google on the same day that Google's releasing it. And I think Google had enough. The stuff that they're coming up with, the stuff that they're releasing is very competitive. VO2, at first glance, seems like it's a lot better than Sora. Once it's fully released and rolled out, we'll do a full side-to-side -side comparison. But Google's not playing around. So it seems like they're rolling out a similar feature. So scheduled prompts feature may soon roll out to Google users. We'll look at that in a second. So this article continues. The feature has a code name Jawbone and has been in development for some time. It's likely to be enabled at the model level as models need to learn how to utilize this tool. There will also be a user interface where users can view, pause, delete, and edit their existing tasks. And it seems like users will be able to simply ask ChatGPT to create without any extra hassle. So as you're talking to ChatGPT, you say, hey, create a task where this happens every day or every week or whatever. When earlier this week, they announced their folders, sort of what I think of as, as projects almost. like So basically the idea is you can create these uh, sort of project folders. Here it is here on, on the left. And then organize certain information underneath those folders. So for example, the example they gave was like house maintenance, right? So you have a house maintenance folder. You upload the scheduling of when you're supposed to, for example, change your air conditioned filters, when you're supposed to pull the weeds in the yard, whatever, right? So you upload all the information to there, and then you're able to ask it like, okay, what am I supposed to do this week or something like that? Now, as cool as that is, that seems kind of supercharged when you're also able to create tasks within that. So now it's able to, for example, send you a text message. Now, I don't know if it's going to be able to send you a text message. I was able to set things like that up back in the days with Zapier, but certainly it's going to have some notification abilities, whether through JGPT or something else. Eventually it's going to get integrated, I'm sure, with text and email and whatever, where it's going to be able to notify like, hey, you're supposed to do this. Don't forget to do this. Me personally, as somebody that has struggled with organizing these sort of randomly scheduled tasks, like, right, if something doesn't happen every day, if it's like once every other week or once a month, sometimes it can be hard to remember what's happening and be kind of up on it. Calendars and scheduling apps help to an extent, but there you have to actually kind of process all the information and add it and be very like specific in how you add it. 
here, you can just upload some document that has all the information in there and be like, hey, figure out how often I'm supposed to, let's say, replace the air filters and then just remind me about it. Also, if those air filters come in a pack of four from Amazon every four months, also remind me to buy that you know pack of air filters from Amazon. If you had to set that up in Google Calendar by like, clicking on things and setting up those dates, you know, it's not hard to do, but it does take time, some sort of cognitive effort. Here, you just say a sentence or two. And this, as if by magic, by the magic of AI, becomes reality. There's going to be a lot less friction to do stuff like this. Not only that, but as these models get better, as they learn more about you, as they become more agentic, you can see how this is going to keep getting better and better. And of course, it does look like Google and Gemini is rolling out something very similar. So here we're seeing, uh, looks like there's an ability to create custom gems. So gems, if you recall, is similar to custom GPTs, right? It's their version of GPTs, which allows you to set up, it seems like this is coming as well, scheduled prompts, right? So these prompts that are able to run at certain specific time intervals. As they say here in the blog post, Google seems to be working on its prompts feature, potentially gearing up this feature for release. Scheduled prompts have been spotted in development a while ago. However, recently, while still hidden under the feature flag, it finally became functional. So here's kind of what that looks like. Again, very, very similar to the chat GPT prompting. So when are you running it, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, etc. Interestingly, Gemini and Google in general are releasing a lot new features and products in December. This may potentially be one of them set to be released in the upcoming weeks. As a wise man once said, I am very excited. Now, one other interesting thing that I've noticed is yesterday in the live stream where they had the virtual interview of Sam Altman, a couple of things jumped out at me, including their conversation about agents and what do agents look like, kind of what is the final form that they're going to take. Let's quickly take a listen to some of the things that Sam Altman mentioned during that interview that I thought were kind of important. First and foremost, he gets asked about what do most people miss about agents? I think there's a lot of uh, kind of semantic confusion around what an agent is. How do you think about the definition of agents today? And what is an agent to you? And what is it not? This is like my off-the-cuff answer. It's not well considered, but something that I can give a long-duration task to and provide minimal supervision during execution for. What do you think people think about agents that actually they get wrong? Well, it's more like, I don't, I don't think any of us yet have an intuition for what this is going to be like. You know, we're all gesturing at something that seems important. Maybe I can give the following example. When people talk about an AI agent acting on their behalf, uh, the the main example that they seem to give fairly consistently is, oh, you can like, you know, you can like ask the agent to go book you a restaurant reservation um, and either it can like use OpenTable or it can like call the restaurant or, or whatever. And, you know, it's like, okay, sure, that's that's like a mildly annoying thing to have to do and it maybe like saves you some work. One of the things that I think is interesting is a world where uh, you can just do things that you wouldn't or couldn't do as a human. So what if, what if instead of calling uh, one restaurant to make a reservation, my agent would call me like 300 and figure out which one had the best food for me or some special thing available or whatever. And then you would say, well, that's like really annoying if your agent is calling 300 restaurants. But if, if it's an agent answering each of those 300, 300 places, then no problem. And it can be this like massively parallel thing that a human can't do. So that's like a trivial example, but there are these like limitations to human bandwidth that maybe these agents won't have. The category I think though is more interesting is not the one that people normally talk about where you have this thing calling restaurants for you. Um, but something that's more like a really smart senior coworker um, where you can like collaborate on a project with and the agent can go do like a two day task or two week task really well. And, you know, ping you at when it has questions, but come back to you with like a great work product. And then they get into kind of like SaaS, right? So software as a service. 
How does that change for agents? A few days ago, we talked about where the CFO of OpenAI kind of mentioned that maybe there's going to be some sort of a pricing that reflects how much sort of value these agents provide. Specifically, if you think about like if they're replacing human labor, right? If you're paying X amount of dollars for a human per month. And this comes in and potentially makes it so that you don't need to sort of have those people there. You don't have the cost of replacing employees as they refer to it as like, what would be a fair pricing for that? How do you charge for that? Do you charge per seat? Like we used to do that in the back in the days per agent. This is kind of an important question because how much these companies charge for these services, how much they cost is going to greatly influence how quickly we're going to see some displacement of workers as these things become more capable, right? If you're able to replace a worker with AI and, you know, cut your expenses by 90%, then companies will rapidly adopt this technology. If they're cutting the cost by 10, 20%, you know, it's still going to happen, but not as quite as rapidly. And of course, the slower it happens, the more time that gives people to to adapt for governments to see if there's maybe some solutions, some safety nets in place, stuff like that. Does this fundamentally change the way that SaaS is priced when you think about extraction of value bluntly and normally it's on a per seat basis but now you're actually kind of replacing labor so to speak how do you think about the future of pricing with that in mind when you are such a core part of an enterprise workforce like how will price or what it will do for people who are no like how will it price oh um like will we always have per seat pricing We re- look, I, I can make, I can like, I'll speculate here for fun, but we really have no idea. Of this. I mean, Sam, I'm a venture investor for a living, so we speculate for fun all the time. It's okay. Um, I mean, I could imagine a world where you can say like, I want one GPU or 10 GPUs or 100 GPUs to just be like churning on my problems all the time. And it's not like, you're not like paying per seat or even per agent, but you're like, it's priced based off the amount of compute that's like working on a, you know, on your problems all the time. Do we need to build specific models for agentic use or do we not? How do you think about that? Um, there's a huge amount of infrastructure and scaffolding to build for sure. But I think O1 points the way to a model that is capable of doing great agentic tasks. I hate the word agentic, by the way. I'd, like, I'd love it if we could come up with a... What would you like? This is your chance to coin uh, a new word. I don't have... Hey, this could be a spoiler alert. That, that really is something. Okay, I'll keep thinking while we talk. <laughs> and finally, they mentioned this little piece about agents and potentially a little piece of research, a little breakthrough that happened that Sam can't talk about yet, but I think maybe is hinting at what is going to come in the future. What in AI does no one focus on that everyone should spend more time on? What is not hot uh, should be hot? I think there's people focused on everything. Uh, what I would love to see, and there's a lot of different ways to solve this problem, but something about an AI that can understand your whole life. It doesn't have to like literally be infinite context, but some way that you can have an AI agent that like knows everything there is to know about you, has access to all of your data, things like that. What was one thing that surprised you in the last month, Sam? It's a research result I can't talk about. But it is breathtakingly good. So something happened. It's breathtakingly good. And uh, yeah, we can't talk about it. So that's interesting. But his point about agents uh, right before that, you know, similar to how we have sort of these levels of AI. So agent, innovator, and finally something that's able to run entire organizations, entire systems. You know, think about like a personal AI agent kind of as an assistant. You might also think of it in terms of levels. Kind of level one, what we're, we're going to start seeing right now is just being able to schedule these recurring tasks to run where this AI like summarizes the AI news for you and just sends you a little snippet every day. Or it has access to some document where you have all your house chores and stuff you got to do around the house. And it just kind of reads it through and then just reminds you if you have anything to do that day. Right, because that's something that can run every morning and on days that you have nothing to do, it'll just say, you have nothing to do today. Here's some things that are coming up this week, right? And on days that you do have something to do, like replace the air filter, it's going to say, today you got to replace the air filter. 
and maybe even sort of ask if he did or not and follow up with you if you didn't. But as you move forward, I mean, eventually that level five or whatever you want to call it is that sort of AI agent that can understand your whole life, that knows everything there is to know about you, has access to all of your data. Most of our stuff is digital now anyway, or can be. Can you imagine this thing that just knows everything about you? It can be your coach. It can be your reminder app, your calendar, tell you to call somebody for their birthday, coaching you how to do better based on what it knows about you. Maybe even a therapist, if you're feeling down, it's able to give you some insights like, hey, you haven't worked out in three days. Maybe try doing that before you get all bummed out. It can help scan the internet for jobs that benefit, that perfectly suit your unique skills and abilities. Potentially even going on interviews for you in, in the situation where Sam's talking about, you know, calling 300 restaurants where all those things are answered by other AI agents. So maybe, you know, if you're looking for a job or anything like that, you can have some sort of a agentic way of doing it, right? Because eventually it might be an HR agent communicating with your little agent, trying to sell them on your unique skills and abilities, make sure that everybody has their boxes checked, like the company's getting everything that they want, you're getting everything that they want. And then eventually it presents you say, okay, like here's this company is looking like a great fit. They are interested. Let's go finally meet them, right? Saving you hours of work. In fact, doing something that you couldn't do, which is reach out to a hundred different companies and kind of like get some more information about what they're about, how they work, etc. Meaning it would be able to do a lot of the thinking and doing for you, knowing what you know about yourself, having access to all your data. And I think with this Jawbone and Google's version of it, right, tasks, we're going to see sort of like the first step in that direction. So let me know what you think. Exciting times up ahead. We might see this, you know, on the 19th, sometime during the 12 days of OpenAI of uh, Shipmas. We'll see if they finally announce something like this. I'm very excited about this. I think this is going to have a lot more functionality and, and, and usability than it seems at first glance. Because now that they have search, they have the advanced voice mode where you're able to just communicate with it, talk back and forth instead of writing everything out. Now with something like this that's able to create automations, it seems like it could be huge. Anyways, with that said, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot more coming. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching. Very excited.